Thanks, Phil. Hi, everyone. Now, we're known for creating the ultimate racing experience on iOS. Well, the new iPhone lets us take this to a whole new level. So today, I'm going to show you Real Racing 3 for the first time. And you're going to see a Porsche GT3 racing on the legendary raceway Laguna Seca. Now, we've got Vince up here to help. Hi, Vince. Let's get it started. Look at the graphics here. Now, these graphics, they've been built to full console quality. And they're running on the powerful new iPhone. I mean, all this is running in the palm of your hands. It's incredible. Now, have a look down the side of this Porsche. See the reflections? You see the car and the track reflecting dynamically in the bodywork. Now, this not only looks awesome, but it actually shows you a bit of what's going on around you. I mean, it actually makes the game easier to play as do rear view mirrors. Yes, for the first time in real racing, you can see behind you. It's great. <laughs> so you've seen the graphics, but Vince has been dissing my re racing recently. So we're taking this out on the track today. And that's me up ahead, Rob M, the flight control icon there. And you're seeing Vince trying to catch me. Now, you might be wondering, you know, Vince and I are racing, and we are. How is it that he's driving, but I'm just standing here? Well, we used Game Center to produce one of the coolest new features in Real Racing 3, time-shifted multiplayer. So I can challenge Vince one day, and he can race me the next. And what you're seeing up ahead, that's actually my race from yesterday. You'd see it a lot closer if Vince could catch me. <laughs> nice one, Vince. So this is not just a ghost. Because you saw Vince bump me. He can fully interact with his vehicle. He can jostle for race position, and he can actually affect my final time in the race. Now this, this is something we have never seen done before. And this is Real Racing 3 for the powerful new iPhone. Real tracks, real cars, real people you can play against any time you like. It's coming to the App Store later this year. Thanks, everyone. If you're a fan of the Real Racing app like I am, you know that it is truly state-of-the-art in the physics and the realism it brings and now to marry that with console quality graphics is un unheard of and unseen before. Truly epitomizes what can be done in the palm of your hand with that A6 chip. So we've got an A6 chip, we've got LTE networking, we've got a larger four inch retina display. You can imagine the challenge the team face now of, of trying to even match the battery life the iPhone 4S has in a thinner and lighter design. And we're really proud because what they've done is not only match but exceed the battery life of the iPhone 4S. So eight hours of 3G talk time and 3G browsing, eight hours of LTE browsing, 10 hours of Wi-Fi browsing, 10 hours of video playback, 40 hours of music playback, 225 hours of standby time. Incredible battery life in the world's thinnest smartphone. Next, the camera. Another area we've done a tremendous amount of engineering in. Now, if you know anything about camera design, you know the biggest challenge is vertical height. Making something thinner is the worst thing you can do to a camera team. So we asked them to go ahead and try to create a camera to fit in a new th thinner, lighter iPhone 5 and deliver the kind of performance we had of the I with the iPhone 4S camera that is heralded as perhaps the best camera in the entire market. And they've done that. They have built in an 8 megapixel sensor, 3264 by 2448, backside illuminated for great low light performance, hybrid IR filter, five element lens, and a fast f2.4 aperture. All the things you loved about the iPhone 4S, now in a camera design, it's 25% smaller. That was a huge undertaking. But they didn't stop there. They've enhanced this camera even further. A few of the examples of what it has now. There's a new dynamic low light mode. So when you're in low light situations, the ISP senses that 
and is able to combine multiple pixels together to give you up to two f-stops greater performance in those scenarios. And you really see the difference in your low-light pictures. And this optical system has been amazing with this five-element lens. One of the best ways to get a better, sharper image through an optical system is more advanced alignment of those lenses for focusing. And the team now is measuring down to the micron level to create better aligned lenses, and you really see a difference in the quality of the image. And for the first time, we cap off this optical system with a sapphire crystal lens cover. So, you know, sapphire is renowned for being hard and crystal clear, and it helps protect your lens and make your images clearer and sharper. On top of this camera system, we have a new ISP, image signal processor from Apple, built into the A6 chip. And it does some tremendous things to help improve your photography. The spatial noise reduction. We want to remove the noisy particles, especially in low-light images. So by looking at surrounding pixels, we can determine where the noise is and help remove that. We also have an Apple technology called a smart filter that looks at the image before the ISP does its noise reduction and can figure out where there's areas that should be uniform color, like a blue sky, and other areas where they're textured and you shouldn't be doing noise reduction on that and it's really powerful to deliver amazing low-light performance. We also have faster photo capture, and the iPhone 4 was already really fast. This is now 40% faster. But it all adds up to simply using it and seeing what kind of pictures you can get. So we've taken the iPhone 5, we've taken pictures with it, and these are from the camera, untouched, and see what you think. The ocean just looks bluer on the iPhone 5. Kids look happier. <laughs> they really do. And the world is just a more beautiful place when you take pictures with the iPhone 5. Now, this is incredible. This is a macro photo, beautiful bokeh or blurred background, as you would want from a great camera system. I'm going to just zoom in a little bit. Look at that bee. You can see the veins on the wings of the bee. I don't know if you've ever tried to do that in a photo. It's not easy. This camera is tremendous. And with iOS 6 and iCloud, you now have a new feature called Shared Photo Streams, where you can take your photos and automatically share them with your friends and family where they can like them and comment on them. But perhaps the most amazing feature of the new camera in iPhone 5 is called Panorama. And this is incredible. With typical legendary Apple ease of use, you just tap and say, I want to take a panorama photo. You hold your phone vertical to get the maximum area, and then you just sweep your scene. And the software tells you what pace to sweep it out to get the perfect image. And what it does is astounding. You get remarkably beautiful photographs, incredible panoramas. This image is 28 megapixels in size, taken right on your iPhone 5 camera. And what the software does is um, unbelievable. Behind the scenes, in real time, while you're panning, is taking slices of photos, finding the edges, stitching them together, creating seamless transitions between those photos for one beautiful panorama. It's even able to turn, determine a nonlinear path through it if you're not perfectly stable and align it, and remove some of the echo artifacts you get if people or objects are moving while you're trying to get that pan. It is truly breakthrough software for panorama photos. Let me zoom in a little more and show you the quality of this image. It's simply stunning, the detail. Now, we use this one because it's a tough one. So you can see the exposure changes from one end to the other as it goes from dark to light. There's even people standing there in the corner that were tougher to see when we pulled out to such a large photo. I have one other example just to show you how much fun you can have with the panorama feature. This is one panorama photo. It looks like there's two people in it. Those are not twins. That's the same person. I leave it to fans of the iPhone to figure out how to do pictures like this and have a blast taking fun panorama photos. Well, the camera is amazing for taking pictures. It's also a lot better for video as well. We still take 1080p HD video. We've improved the video stabilization with the new ISP and the A6 chip. We have face detection for up to 10 faces while you're shooting the video. And, of course, you can take photos while you're recording video. And the camera on the front has been updated as well. The FaceTime camera is now a FaceTime HD camera, 720p, backside illuminated for great low light performance, does face detection, and you can do FaceTime over cellular networks as well. So that's the new camera, EyeSight and FaceTime cameras built into iPhone 5. <laughs> Thank you.
everything's been updated in iPhone 5, and that goes for the audio system as well. We now have not two, but three microphones built in to iPhone 5. One on the bottom, one on the front, and another on the back. This helps in many situations. You're doing a FaceTime call, you're creating a video, you've got the perfect placement for your microphones. We can use them for noise cancellation solutions, and we can use them for beam forming, which is important on voice recognition in applications like Siri. So a big advance in the, in the microphones. We've improved the speaker as well. Now instead of two magnets in the transducer, there's five magnets. It gives a better frequency response for the audio. And best of all, they fit it into a space that's 20% smaller while sounding better. We've even updated the earpiece so that when you hold it to your head and make a call, not only do we noise cancellation on your voice going out to whoever you're speaking with, we do noise cancellation on what you hear through your own earpiece, removing some of the surrounding noise in your area to make it clearer to listen to your call. And we've got a new technology called wideband audio if you want amazing sound performance. But what's this? Well, on a typical cell phone call, this is what it looks like, the frequency of, of the data in your voice. And you see it's somewhat compressed around the mid-range to help make that call more intelligible. But it doesn't sound entirely natural all the time. So with wideband audio, we can fill out more of the frequency spectrum and make your voice sound even more natural. This is a new technology. We're just starting it, and we have carrier partners around the world working with us on it. We'll have 20 at launch supporting this. Great partners like Deutsche Telekom and Orange supporting it at launch. So that's the new audio system in the iPhone 5. Next. <laughs> the connector. You know, the iPhone, from its start, has used the iPod 30-pin connector which we launched originally in 2003. And it served us well for almost a decade. But so much has changed since we first created that 30-pin connector. So many of the things we used to do over the wire, we now do wirelessly. We use Bluetooth now to connect to speakers and headphones and car systems. We use Wi-Fi to, for example, use, do AirPlay to our TV or to our stereo. We can do Wi-Fi syncing to iTunes now. And best of all, with iCloud, we can download all our content wirelessly and even back up to the cloud. So a lot's changed, and it's time for the connector to evolve. And that's just what we've done. Our new connector is called Lightning. So now we have Thunderbolt and Lightning in our connector strategy. This connector is a modern connector for the next decade. All digital, eight-signal design. It's adaptive to what those signals need to be for the different accessories you might plug into. It's more durable and much easier to use because now you can plug it in in either direction. It doesn't matter. And best of all for the engineering team to make a product like this, it's 80% smaller. It's a huge difference in the world's thinnest smartphone. We're working with accessory makers to have them integrate lightning connectors into products you may choose to buy, for example, this holiday season. We have great partners working with us, partners like Bose, JBL, Bowers and Wilkins, Bang and Olufsen, and many more. But what about all the devices and speakers and connectors you have now that you already have that use a 30-pin connector? Well, we're creating a bunch of accessories to help you with that. This is a 30-pin to lightning adapter, and it works just like you'd expect. You can plug your 30-pin cable into it and it into your iPhone 5. So a typical example for this might be in your car, where you have an iPod connection kit. You just plug in this adapter, you can just leave it there. Now whenever you jump in your car, plug in iPhone 5, and you can charge and listen to your music as you go. So that's the new lightning connector. <laughs> Perhaps one of the most important features of iPhone is the software it runs. And we have iOS 6, the latest version of the world's most advanced operating system. And it's been designed from the very beginning to take full advantage of this beautiful 4-inch retina display and all the performance and features the iPhone 5 has to offer. So what we'd like to do is have you see for the first time iOS 6 running on the new iPhone 5. And to do that, I'd like to invite up Scott Forstall. Scott? 